and i'm gonna tell you guys a story about being out at my camp that like disturbs me to this day it's black hoodie i'm back cooking these goodies look at these views from cooking these foods yeah all right y'all it's unseasonably warm out it's october 29th sun's about to dip it's golden hour it's like 10 degrees out it's fall it's beautiful and uh i want to have a little fire campfire action we're doing dogs on the skewers a little mustard a little ketchup no buns as you can see because our calorie conscious carbs consumption is coming from we're gonna have two s'mores for dessert uh, and a couple pieces of this jersey milk a couple marshmallows four pieces of graham cracker we're gonna light this baby up from this and a crazy extension cord that is needs to be untangled wrapped and put away for the season we're gonna fire this up chill and talk about the good old days when the living was easy as a kid no stresses no bills none of this adult shit you know what i mean let's fire this up first things first propane wide open into the gray wide open and then we gotta go this guy right here a little bit of gas just leaking to start just to get it rolling okay. ah ha 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 no come on stay 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 okay 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 please stay we only need moderate flame anyways right we're doing dogs and mallows so we just need it to be moderate but i think it's kind of wet it rained earlier Great success. You already know when we're cozy, we're campy, we're comfort, right? We got the house jams on, we got them tucked in, and we're ready to go. All right, so you got me out here literally sitting campfire, crisscross applesauce, which, whichever you want to call it. That's actually an interesting question I do have is, do you call it sitting campfire or crisscross applesauce? Because where I'm from growing up, it was always sitting campfire. Because like, you imagine the logs and just being around them, you sit on the ground, but then some people call it crisscross applesauce. And I think that's more American, but I could be wrong. Anyways, let's get to roasting these dogs. I'll give you an up close of the, uh, of the shots when we're in the flame. But for now, we got the ballpark beef doggies. And I got these long skewers here. And uh, we're gonna weave that through and try not to suture ourselves in the process. Now, back of the day, you would do the thing where you cut it and then it spiders. But I personally think that's kind of disgusting. It used to freak me out. I never liked to do spiders. So I'm sorry if I didn't spider, but I don't like a spider dog. But that is a bent weenie. Okay, let's get in this fire and roast these. Actually, you know what? No. Preparation is key. Let's do both before we get in the fire and then we'll get in the fire and i'm gonna tell you guys a story about being out at my camp that like disturbs me to this day just activities i partook in that make me feel really kind of weird and guilty but it's very like evil but being that we're around halloween i guess uh <laughs> suitable fitting <laughs> but some of you are gonna be like oh man that's disappointing i'm disappointed in myself but anyways let's get in the fire because we got two dog a <laughs> Someone's on the hunt. All right, y'all, I got you situated in these flames. I wonder how long it will take to flame roast, to propane flame roast a hot dog. And do I, my question is, do I keep it on like, a spot and just kind of let it try to char out and get the bubbles or do i try to be on rotisserie chicken mode slash 7-eleven drunk late night on the roller mode you know what i mean i like roller mode personally i don't like it to get charry bubbly but i don't know exactly how powerful this is how long it's going to take it's weird to hold <laughs> It's like wobbly, you know, it's tough. But she's starting to heat, she's starting to grease, starting to release some of her liquids. 
as they tend to on Halloween. Wait, what? <laughs> but on that note about 7-Eleven uh, Rolly Dogs, I used to, I remember one time I was super drunk and I used to stop at 7-Eleven sometimes out of desperation if there was nothing else that I could really stop at. And I would grab like shit from the hot tray. And most times I would grab like pizza and chicken bites and stuff which they were all pretty good or taquitos taquitos are actually sick if you're a seven drunk 7-eleven or taquitos are actually a really safe bet the cream cheese and jalapeno ones in specifically stay away from the buffalo chicken the chicken in there is quite weird but anyways they they were kind of low one night and they had uh they had the hot dogs rolling around and i was like in desperate dire like just hungry drunk state and i was like i i'll take the hot dog and like i got home and i bit into it and it was so like rubbery and resilient and like it was i don't know it was just it was wrong it just was so wrong and some people might even just say hot dogs in general are wrong and you might be right in saying that but for some reason they're also like one of the most delicious things ever in my opinion. So maybe I'm wrong in general as a human. Don't fault me for it, please. <laughs> but that's my tale of 7-Eleven dogs. So stay away from those if you can. Maybe I got a bad one. Maybe I got a bad batch. I don't know. But uh, I'll save it. Oh, there you go. The grease is on release. Where are we at here? See, near this end though, isn't getting any any love. It's too close to the stick. Okay, let's give you an up close see where we're at. Definitely getting some char, some maybe some rock transference as well, as well whatever's on these rocks. But whatever, whatever, you know, bacteria and eating random shit will make you stronger, right? That's how we have to look at it. What else was I gonna say? Oh, I wonder how, <laughs> I wonder how the propane will affect the flavor <laughs> on this. So this is taking a hell of a long time. Maybe this is mesmerizing ASMR-ish thing. I could probably reconstitute this vid as an ASMR if I was just sitting here being quiet, rolling a hot dog in a home fire. <laughs> home propane thing this came with the previous owners left this here so you know i didn't i didn't buy this at all this is not my baller move this is just a uh, just a perk that came that came along and honestly it's been one of the nicest best like it's just a nice additive that i've definitely gotten deep use out of and for good reason it's calming and captivating and nice to chill by relaxing but I think I don't know like are we oh yeah that's really hot and cooked let's get the other one on. I'll do this one and I'll meet you back when we're ready to uh, to stuff some wieners in our mouth all right we're ready to stuff weenie in here <laughs> We need to, I literally just sacrificed to the gods while I was doing other shit. I just laid it in there. Maybe I need to get that part still. I'm gonna lay it back in for just a second. But we got weenie one. And we're gonna go in with, uh, with the no sugar ketchup. It's my, uh, one of my new things on the, on the low carb, no sugar ketchup. It's actually, I love it. It's certainly more uh, more tangy of a ketchup. You can tell that there's less sweetness. Mm. But uh, when you're trying to eliminate the sugars as much as you can, fantastic alternative. Why is this so good? It does the propane. 
I guess a barbecue is propane, so what am I thinking? That's no different. I'm just being an idiot. Should have put two and two together on that one. What a guy. Mm. Amazing. Don't even need a bun. So let me know, did you guys used to make spider dogs? Try a little musty. Or did you not? Did it freak you out like it freaked me out? I didn't like them. They were too like jiggly and weird. It's like I'm straight up. Always interesting to consider like how different the flavor of a hot dog is like in a campfire on a on a barbecue in a pan and so it, it just varies makes the flavor vary a lot but then it also ties you to the memory and we all know that childhood campfire campfire foods we'll call them memories some of the best some of my best mm. i just got a bite with this one has more char on it yeah carcinogens baby this reminds me of the in the fire campfire but yeah back in my day like past night it's like parents family like all the parents of the families that came over like from your friends plus aunts and uncles and shit everybody would just let loose and all the parents would get drunk and they'd have a good time and we'd be running around playing uh, hide and go seek in the dark. Uh, take flashlights and go in the water and flip rocks and try to catch crayfish. Try to catch frogs, toads. That's where my story leads at the end of this. But we'll save that for the... Uh, for our dessert. And then, yeah, that night goes on and it gets kind of late. The parents are kind of want, like they're winding down maybe inside now a bit or, or by the fire. So the embers are burning low. That's when the marshmallows come out and you as kids are just tuckered out. Like at that point you're tired because you know how the fire gets your face hot and it makes your eyes dry and your eyes hot that makes you tired plus you've been running around burning laps with your friends just doing dumb shit trampoline whatever maybe not everybody can relate but this was my experience in life i was lucky to have it extremely lucky to have it don't take it for granted but uh just my my personal experience but uh the best nights miss those days oh yeah ghost stories at the flashlight we never to be honest our my my crew like us we never did really uh too much in the way of ghost stories i just feel like we didn't really have any good ones like i just didn't know any but you'd make stupid ones up like old man <laughs> this lived at that house and he was uh you know what I mean? You kind of make try to make dumb shit up, but like it wasn't good. Anyways, let's roast these mallows. I'm just gonna do one mallow on each uh, sandwich, but we can probably do two per the stick. But that could get complicated for when you have to extract. So I met with a decision here. 
because the extraction is, di is, is definitely difficult. Let's see if I can roast the perfect mallow. I have no idea when the last time I roasted marshmallow was. The dope thing about this is we have variable flame options, right? Like I can just barely kiss, barely kiss it, which is what you really want to roast the perfect mallow. You just gotta barely kiss it and always keep her kind of twist. And even this flame is kind of freaking me out by the fact that it's, it keeps reaching up, but I'm in an awkward spot here. So we're gonna have to be careful. Yeah, see, I don't know. Oh, gotta be careful. Stop kissing it. I gotta come right here, maybe. Like I was saying, at the end of the night, that's when the embers are down low. Like, that's when you get the perfect mallows. Sun's finally almost dipping now. We're running out of light. Hope you guys enjoy this video. <laughs> Super random, but I thought it would be kind of uh, nostalgic, even though it's we're not really camping, but... It's the closest we get, okay? Urban camping. <laughs> Those hot dogs were freaking no. See, and then you catch fire. Hunger Games, catching fire. All right, I'll meet you when I extract these. Cause you're gonna take some effort here. All right, it's not working the best, but they're definitely where they need to be. Like they're soft. Question for you: Are you the type of person who used to peel the shell? eat it and put the under the inside the new gooey back in the fire and get another shell and peel it like three times that was a move but anyways let's uh do this i haven't had a s'more in so long and i'll tell you what a s'more is a magical creation very magical creation so i'm getting cocky with the chalky usually you go for like two pieces but i'm doing a four on the floor right here no big deal and then we're gonna go ahead and extract the mallow. Now here is the key, right? When you extract the mallow, you gotta kinda be ready to trap it in a sense, right? So you kinda give you a better angle. You kinda, oh, this one came off nice. Sometimes you gotta trap it and pull it with the, uh, with the top roof. And then you squish it down and uh, for me i'm gonna let this just affect that chocolate for just a little moment while i do the other one it's gonna get that chocolate nice and warmed up get that heat and then this dog is just out of control tonight holy sorry about that but this is real life we're out in nature baby <laughs> yeah Okay. So we got two made. This on my fingers is reminding me of another thing. And we used to call it ghost gum. And so what you do is you wouldn't roast the mallow, you just take it naked and uh, you just play with it. And you play with it until it started going like this and you could like make things with it like that and it just became like super gooey and gross. And the only way you could really get it off was to go down to, to, the, to the beach and you rub it off in the water with sand. Because the sand is like an exfoliant and it gra the granular nature of it would take, take it off. It was a complete waste of a marshmallow though. All right, a s'more. I haven't had something like this in so long. Mm -hmm. incredible and for me it's always a jersey milk although a cadbury would be probably good in here too but i love jersey milk that's stupid good Every time something like this with a dog happens, it reminds me of a baby crying. And this is like a deep personal fault or issue I think that I have. It's like, I love dogs. Babies are cute and cool and stuff to some degree. 
But like, as soon as something like this, like crying or some incessant barking, it just, it cuts to the very core of the worst person inside of me. And reduces me <laughs> to like a primal state. <laughs> And that's why I probably won't, or I know I won't, but I shouldn't have t children. And we got a plane. All right. I'll try to tell you the story in a very fast way because we're contending with a dog. It really isn't that long anyways. Like I said, we used to gather toads and stuff. Um, but one night, my oldest stepbrother is five years older, and you know how when you're the younger, the youngest, you want to hang out with like your oldest, the cool people? He was having friends over, and uh, we were going to have like a, their own like private like teenage bonfire, and my other stepbrothers were up with their dad for like a week but my oldest stepbrother came with his friends to have their own private bonfire but I of course was there and I wanted to get in on the action so they let me in they let me hang out with them for the night so I was like yes yeah, score like I get to be with the cool older guys So we go and collect toads. And they round up all these toads in a bucket. We go back to the fire. And one of his buddies pulls out a grip of bottle rockets. Bottle rockets are these little firecrackers. Things with a stem. It's a firework, essentially. But a little one. And they were like... They had this sinister plan to put bottle rockets in the mouths of the toads, light them up, and see what happens. And then they had a de they had a Roman candle as well. That was going to be the final, the biggest toad that they found. They were going to shove the Roman candle. <laughs> this sounds so morbid right now. I was young. I was. I didn't have any choice. They were doing it. I was like ten. So. They had a king, like the, the big one, and they were saving for the Roman candle. And then they did like two or three with the bottle rockets. I just watched because like, I didn't want to like, I wasn't allowed to like play with fireworks and toads. Like I wasn't, I wasn't opening a toad's mouth at 10 being like, uh, see you know what I mean? Anyways, <laughs> they were being weird uh, teenage boys with a sinister plan <laughs> to blow up toads. And so they blew up a few toads, and then, of course, we had the finale. Toad, the big boy toad, with the uh, the Roman candle. And uh, whatever, whatever. Next day, I go back to look around the fire pit. Because in my head, I'm like, is there going to be toad guts and remains and stuff here? And sure enough, I can see, like, little organs lying around and shit. And soon after, like, within, I felt, I started to feel guilty about it. I was like, I was really fucked up. And uh, ever since that incident, I can never forget that memory of that. Because I always still think to myself, like, that was a little messed completely unnecessary that's you know what I mean like it was literally just like cruel entertainment and uh it's never sat well with me but uh I guess I tell you that story to tell you kind of a, a morbid cruel gross story but something that stuck with me and uh like I knew it wasn't cool so I still know it's not cool. So 
basically but that's the thing when you're young and you're growing up you just don't know any better you're so you're just so not developed especially even with when these what these guys were like 14 15 or whatever you're still so in such a younger mind state you just don't get you don't have that perspective yet most usually also boys men our nature is to be kind of like diminutive and destructive so i think that plays into it and then at the time there's shit on tv like cky and all that stuff like the like bam margera and that like influences you too you're like oh like they they do this dumb shit so let's let's do some dumb shit so but easily influenced when you're young is what i'm trying to say but we're all done here one meal for the day already hit 6k on the on the jog today and i ate super light last night just a salad um a couple dogs i think that's 300 calories for the wieners and then the uh the snack the the dessert is probably what's two marshmallows copies of chocolate and a couple graham crackers probably another couple hundred so i'm probably clocking in at like six seven hundred cows and i already burned off i don't know at least probably anywhere between three and four hundred just from my my jogging and running but i've also been on my feet cruising around doing shit all day too so we're keeping it tight we're keeping it right I'm trying to keep moving down the slender chain i don't mind having a seemingly not so healthy meal but when you consider calories in calories out at a certain point that's just what it comes down to it's how much you moving how much you burning and then how much you putting in your body and also i'm on deep intermittent fasting right and like very disciplined with it i don't i don't stray i just have coffee and water through the day and in my coffee no sweet like no real sugar uh, a splash of almond milk there's like hardly any calories it's like it's like 10 calories for a cup now well, maybe a little more maybe 20 but anyways we're on our mission we're on our goals we're keeping going and i thought this would be a <laughs> fun little adventure to to treat uh to treat us to some urban campfiring <laughs> all right so hope you enjoyed it till the next one you know what to do eat good live well stay true also if you want to help out the channel link down below in the description no pressure love you if you do till the next one you know what to do eat good live well Stay true. If you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe, as well as check out my pinned comment down below to find other ways to support this channel. Thank you for watching. Eat good, live well, and stay true.